When I first started out in Apple Motion, there was a very large issue that I kept consistently running into and I just didn't know how to fix it. It took me way too long reading through Apple Motion's help manual to figure out what the issue was and so in this video, I'm going to show you how to address that. The issue is that when I bring a template into Final Cut Pro and I'll push play, you'll see we have this nice smooth animation. However, if I were to shorten down the length of this title, you'll notice that the animation plays out way faster and it completely removes all of the timing that I originally had. Additionally, if I were to set this to a much longer duration and push play, you'll notice that the animation plays out extremely slowly. So it's automatically stretching out the duration of this animation to accommodate for the length of the title. So how do we fix this problem? Well, you'll need to go into your template, right click on it and then select open in Apple motion. In here, you should have your timeline down at the base. And what you'll wanna do is go to the end of the intro animation that you've built. So for me, it's once those particles go off screen. From there, we'll push Shift M and that will add in this green marker. To access that green marker, you can either right click on it and select edit marker, or you can double click on it. In here, you can add stuff like a name to your marker and comments. You can even adjust the position of your marker by clicking on these two arrows. But what you'll notice here at the bottom is the type. Currently, it is set to standard. Now, a standard marker is just like any other marker. It's just to let you know where an action is happening on the timeline that you wanna keep track of. But if we click on this window, you'll notice that we have all of these other options. Build in mandatory, build in optional, build out mandatory, build out optional, project loop, end, and poster frame. To resolve the issue that we are running into, we need to add a build in mandatory point or a build in optional point. Most of the time, I typically select build in optional and I'll show you why that is. By selecting that, we'll go ahead and push OK. You'll notice that this is now added in the green marker and it gives us this yellow dotted line throughout the rest of the project. This yellow dotted line indicates that the rest of this project will be stretched out to the duration of our title. However, the stuff happening before this green marker is going to stay consistent to its original timing that we built inside of Apple Motion. So if I push Command S to save this, we can jump back inside of Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut Pro, if I go ahead and extend out the duration of this title and push play, you'll notice that the intro animation is completely consistent with how we built it inside of Motion. But you'll also notice that the rest of the animation has been completely stretched out just like it was previously. You'll also notice here at the end that we have an outro animation that we want to take place, but it's all completely slowed down. So again, we'll need to go back over into Apple Motion. Go ahead and scroll to where the end of the animation is supposed to take place, push shift M to add another marker, double click on it, and we'll change it over to build out optional, and then we'll push OK. From there, we can push Command S and then jump back into Final Cut Pro. Now, if we play our animation, you'll notice that it starts off perfectly normal, then it really stretches out the animation to fill up the space here in the middle. Then at the very end, you'll notice that it goes back to its original pacing. So that is how we can resolve the issue for the intro and the outro animation, but that point in the middle is where you really need to consider how your animation is going to take place inside of Final Cut Pro. So the reason we selected a build in optional or build out optional is that it gives us these two additional controls inside of Final Cut Pro. There are these checkboxes that we can enable or disable. When I disable that, you'll notice that that intro animation is no longer taking place inside of Final Cut Pro. It's just that animation that's happening between the two green markers. Or I can go ahead and check this box and now that intro animation will take place inside of Final Cut Pro. So this can be a great way to give your users the ability to decide if they want to animate something in or to not animate it in. Now there is one last option you can do to create an animation that just consistently performs the same duration inside of Final Cut Pro and and that is to build a perfect loop. Here in motion, I'm gonna delete both markers by right clicking and then select delete all markers in this space. And then we can go to a point where we want the animation to loop. I'll push shift M to add a marker. 
we could double click on it and change the type from standard over to project loop end. So now in Final Cut Pro, this is how long the duration of the title is going to be. And it's just gonna keep on consistently looping at this point. I'm gonna actually go ahead and make this project loop point much shorter so we can really see it happening and then go inside of Final Cut Pro. So now pushing play, you'll just see that the animation keeps on looping back and forth. So if you were to perfectly set it up to be a looped animation, then you would never even see any of these seams that we're now seeing inside of Final Cut Pro. And finally, to cover all my bases, there is that last selection you can make to select a poster frame. This is going to be the preview frame that you see in Final Cut Pro as a thumbnail when you're scrolling through your titles. So once you've set that, Motion is essentially taking a screenshot of the position of everything here, and it's going to set that up as your little thumbnail that you'll see here in the top left-hand corner. So that was the one thing that I think every Apple Motion user should know.